Hi, it's Nate with Phoenix Project Management with a video demonstrating basic scheduling techniques in Phoenix and how to link your project together to get an accurate critical path. If you are new to critical path method scheduling, or if you'd just like to review how the CPM calculation works, you may want to watch our CPM Scheduling 101 video to get up to speed. To begin with, here is a schedule with all of the tasks needed to complete a project already entered. However, until we input the relationships, constraints, and lags that make up the schedule logic, all we have is a to-do list. So let's start with relationships. A relationship is always between two activities, the predecessor activity and the successor activity. This is easiest to visualize with finish to start relationships where the predecessor must complete before the successor can begin. Conveniently, finish to start relationships are also the most common relationship type because most task dependencies can be described as I must complete X before I can start Y. Let's begin inputting relationships between activities, starting with the construction activities and entering finish to start relationships. First, we want to show that activity 20 must complete before activity 30 can begin, and then that 30 must complete before 40 can begin. You can create relationships by dragging from the start or finish of one activity to the start or finish of another, which will create the appropriate relationship type. In this case, we're dragging from the finish of one activity to the start of another to create a finish to start relationship. If you need to create a relationship to a task that's either off screen or otherwise difficult to drag to, you can either click and drag to unoccupied space on the schedule, which will let you select a successor activity from a pop-up list, or you can create the relationship in the predecessor or successor windows, which I'll show you next. A given activity may have relationships with any number of other activities. For each of these relationships, the other activity will either be a predecessor in a relationship or a successor. You can view the predecessors and successors of an activity's relationships by opening the predecessor or successor windows. As mentioned, you can create new relationships from the predecessor and successor windows by entering the ID of the activity that you would like to make either the predecessor or successor of your currently selected activity and pressing the Enter key. From these windows, you can also edit any relationship between the currently selected activity and its predecessors or successors. Before we describe the other relationship types, let's go ahead and calculate our current schedule by selecting Schedule and Schedule Now from the menu, or hitting F2. This will calculate the schedule based on the relationships we've already entered. Now, let's go ahead and change the relationship between our currently selected activity, number 90, and its successor, number 100. Go ahead and select the relationship type, change it from finish to start to start to start, press the enter key, and you're done. The relationship has now changed, so it runs from the start of activity 90 to the start of activity 100. You can also add these relationships by dragging from the start of one activity to the start of another, just like you added the finish to start relationships. Schedule again, and you'll see the activities move to their correct dates based on the start to start relationships. The next thing I'd like to talk about is lag. Lags add duration to a relationship, so that the successor activity will not start or finish until a specified number of days after its predecessor activity starts or finishes. For instance, let's add a lag of 5 days to the relationship that we created between activity 90 and 100, and then press enter. Because this is a start to start relationship, that means activity 100 will not start until 5 days after activity 90 has started, so let's schedule and see the results. If you happen to know the specific date you would like to lag an activity to, you can use the Lag To feature to automatically calculate the required lag. Let's select Activity 100 and lag its successor, Activity 110, to July 13th. This will calculate the appropriate lag for us, and if we schedule, you'll see the activity now starts on July 13th. Please note that this only calculates the lag needed to arrive at that date based off the current schedule logic. If the logic changes, the activity can move. Finally. A note about constraints. A constraint is an external or artificial restriction on when an activity can begin or end. While constraints can affect the CPM calculation, they're a little less straightforward. We'll cover those along with some other advanced scheduling techniques in another video. For now, let's finish inputting relationships and calculate our final critical path. There, the critical path has been calculated, and those activities not on the critical path have a float of 10 days. 
as you may recall from our CPM Scheduling 101 video, that means these non-critical activities could finish up to 10 days late without affecting project finish, while the critical path activities may not slip even one day. I hope this video has given you a good overview of the fundamentals of building an accurate CPM schedule in Phoenix Project Manager, and if you have any questions or would like to download a trial version of the software, please visit www.phoenixcpm.com.